What is something that sounds safe but actually isn't? Dryer lint. Clear your dryer vents, people. Whenever I'm camping and need to absolutely start a fire with a single spark, I use dryer lint. So, do you carry it around with you or is it just some stuff you pulled out of a forgotten pocket? Take dryer lint and a little bit of petroleum jelly and put them in a Ziploc bag. Just keep it in a side pocket, and dry. When you need a fire, pull some out, light it, and it'll burn a long enough time to catch your wood on fire. Great for emergencies. I stick it in a paper towel tube. The cardboard extends the burn time just a bit too. This is what the pros do. When we were camping in the desert and it was super windy and couldn't start our fire, our camp neighbors had a whole container filled with dryer lint stuck in toilet paper tubes. A free little fire starter. I use cardboard egg cartons. Make 12 at a time and tear them apart as I need them. This is what I do. You can also pour a little bit of candle wax into each section to make them burn longer. The wax also waterproofs them if you put enough on. Going in a car without a headrest on your seat. It's not just a pillow for comfort. What's the consequence of not? Whiplash? You'll get one anyway, but at least your neck will not snap all the way back, because the headrest is stopping you from doing so. Depending on the height of the cab it can prevent a passenger that isn't wearing their seatbelt from flying around from back to front. There are a significant amount of vehicle accident deaths that happen because someone in the vehicle not wearing a seatbelt bounces around smashing the heads of the other occupants that are wearing seatbelts. It blew my mind that a lot of people don't wear seatbelts in NYC cabs or Ubers. You're still in a car, just because you have someone else driving doesn't mean you're any safer. Farming everyone thinks about bucolic pastures, pretty red barns and cute little critters running around, but farming is the sixth most dangerous occupation in the United States, higher than law enforcement, firefighters, power line workers and iron workers. Most of farming deaths involve accidents with machinery, but grain storage deaths are high as well, if a farmer falls into, say a bin of canola he sinks to the bottom and suffocates fairly quickly as well as the unfortunate ones that fall into pig manure pits and drown in liquid shit. Farm animals also kill a lot of farmers too because a 180 pounds man doesn't have good odds going up against a 1,200 pounds cow. Plus the fact that no one talks about is the mental health related deaths, farming is incredibly stressful and suicide deaths in the farming community is rising steadily. One of the worst things is how isolating a lot of the work can feel, especially outside of harvests. And just how isolated everything is in general, really, makes it hard to react during any sort of emergency. Shit. My grandpa died at 61 from an otherwise treatable heart problem, because it took 40 minutes for an ambulance just to get there. One of the worst things is how isolating a lot of the work can feel, especially outside of harvests. Farming's also a top 10 profession for suicide risk. Not only is it often isolating, but you also have the pressures of being a small business owner along with what's often the pressure of generations of family expectation. It's bad enough having a small social circle, or having to sell your business, but it's worse when you have that and also are talking about selling something that's been in your family for 100 years. E, to be clear, these aren't issues that I'm personally facing, but they're common in the ag industry. Yes, it's an industry, just like any other field of work, some stories about families who have dealt with this. NewYorkTimes.com NewYorkTimes.com Can relate to a degree. I lost the farm when my ex decided to sell and shack up with another woman. Nothing was in my name, but I did most of the work. Never making that mistake again. It's been a few years, but I still feel like there's a huge hole in me. Farming has been my whole life in one way or another, and trying to make life work in the city just makes it hurt more. Four-wheelers. So many injuries and deaths from people who don't respect what they can do and just how easy they are to topple. Grain silos. People die every year because they explode with static electricity. Edit, and a lot of other ways too, including cave-ins, suffocation, burning, and other scary things. Thanks for educating me more on the ways grain silos can kill you. For sure. We had a very large explosion in my home state. I remember my chemistry teacher explaining to us how it happened. During his demonstration he managed to create a small explosion and also catch his podium on fire. We were all sworn to secrecy and I have never spoken of it until now. Approximately 23 years later, Mr. May, I hope you've retired by now and I don't get you fired. 
Just got a note from Mr. May, snitches get stitches. Walking up or downstairs. Broke both my ankles tripping down the last three steps two weeks ago. Doctors were confused as to how I did both. No idea. Trip, pain, headbutt the radiator. Hey, don't feel bad. Tripped and fractured my tibial plateau, basically my knee. I've not been able to walk for over a month. Ducking stairs. Everybody should rightfully know that Tide Pod challenges were unsafe, but the more innocent one was the cinnamon challenge. Cinnamon powder does not mix with water, so the instant reflex from the body was to cough to get rid of this unknown substance, but the inhale of air to cough with could cause you to inhale the cinnamon into your lungs. And that could cause serious harm or even death if severe enough. I had an adult challenge me to this when I was like 11. Of course I did it. I aspirated the cinnamon and coughed and threw up for like 20 minutes. No amount of drinking liquids helped and I honestly thought I was going to die. The person who challenged me laughed the whole time. It was very cruel and as an adult now, I cannot even fathom challenging a child to do that. And this is proof that some people stop maturing emotionally after middle school. Who challenges a child to do a cinnamon challenge? From my friend who works in government studying accidents, duck boats. I tried to search for duck boat because I didn't know what that was, and Google autocorrected me to duck boat accident. Telling your hour department how you really feel about your boss. Hmm. Using a dull knife rather than a sharp one? Really like this one. It sounds so safe, well it's not sharp so it won't cut as easily. But it's so dangerous because you have to press harder and have way less control. The cuts with a dull knife are also quite terrible. Half crush wound, half cut wound. More jagged and sore. Takes ages to heal whereas a clean cut often just sticks together. Don't put your feet up on the dashboard of a car when you're riding in the front seat. It doesn't matter if you're wearing a seatbelt, your kneecaps are going to go through your skull if you get in an accident. I used to do it all the time when I was younger, now I want to scream every time I see it. Even if your knees miss your head, your femurs and hips will be more or less irreparable. Injuries incompatible with life. Wow that's a particularly depressing set of words lol. It's like the medical version of yikes. It's one of the only reasons EMS can pronounce someone dead without an actual physician coroner. Usually people don't argue when the victim is missing a head. Driving. Mouthing off to a stranger. You never know how crazy they might be, or if they have a weapon. Just bite your tongue. I barely honk on the road when dealing with a bad driver pedestrian, am terrified of road rage. I live in a major city and shootings have recently become very common on the expressways here. It sucks but and I try to avoid anyone driving questionably. Safes. They will bloody well crunch your fingers if you are not careful. I honestly get nervous closing the safe at work. If I slam a finger in there, it takes two minutes to reopen it. And that's if I have the ability to get the key and my code in there. Use a tool to push it shut, same as using a tool to feed wood through a table saw. Can't be safe if you don't feel safe. Cleaning a cat's leader box with bleach. Don't mix ammonia and bleach. You'll be committing a war crime. Flushable wipes. They can actually clump together into big balls that clog your drain or worse cause issues for the town's plumbing way down the line. We had a lift station cleaned out. In the bottom of a 30 silo there was a cake made of wipes, tampons, and condoms. This cake was so dense that a person could stand on it. This was obstructing the pumps at the bottom of the silos which, in a worst case scenario, would overflow into the adjacent river. Stop flushing stupid stuff down the ducking toilet. There really needs to be more awareness to the fact that condoms should not be flushed down the drain. I mean they're literally built to not break under stress in a damp place. Sounds like such a duh thing in retrospective.